let me introduce uh, Ahmed Baba, who's a co-founder, president, and editor-in-chief of Rant Media, also a columnist for the British newspaper, The Independent. Brother, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you is, do we accept uh, Stacey Dash back into the black <laughs> delegation? What do you think? No, no way. No way. The black delegation is not having that. What the black delegation should do is commission the trade. Now, I think we should, we could trade Stacey. Who do y'all think? I'm thinking maybe, you know, we got Eminem. I mean, some easy low hanging <laughs> fruits. We could no, trade. Yeah. Eminem is too easy. Um, right. yeah. I, you know, and it's crazy because this new generation, look, every time the new generation, this new generation, you're getting um, old, Rebecca. right. Um, has, has given us stuff like bad baby, the girl that did, Ugh. uh, what is that? The uh, Catch me outside. outside. How about that? Catch yeah, me outside. that one. Yeah. And they've yeah. given us yeah. e even this new girl from that Uber video that we saw oh, may goodness. become somebody as well. They've given us like Kim Kardashian. These people are no, we don't we don't want them. Not to say that they're like Kim Kardashian is a fly woman, but she can't come to the cookout just cookout. because she married to a black man. True. So I don't know what I don't know who it would who be. Would I really I, we got, that's that's a good question. We got to really really think about that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I take I. I know it's not the kind of trade we normally would trade for uh, someone from the Caucasus Mountains, but I would take Omarosa <laughs> back um, and they could keep Stacey Dash uh, just because like, I like having the most cutthroat person on our team. She like, real. She, she will. She yeah, she's got that like, tactician's mind. You know, she can like, oh, she can help. She can help some scheming, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, she's a master at that. So I, I, it's an overwhelming no from the chat room. So I'm sorry, Stacey Dash, your tearful uh, video. Like we, we don't want you back. It Stay better be you. only coming from black folks. Well, that's why I qualified it. Like we love, we, I love, I love my non-black audience. We appreciate you, but we only need a black delegation on that one. That said, brother, hey, listen, I, I, I've been watching your work for some time um, with Rant Media. Could you tell us about that platform and what uh, inspired you to start it? Well, first off, thanks for having me on because I mean this show is it's pretty it's pretty lit. I mean, if you played up before this, you would have caught me, you know, dancing on that <laughs> on that screen when it was because I was I was caught off guard. I was jamming when yeah. the camera came up. So I appreciate the show, but I mean, ran in general. So what we're trying to do is, I mean, as you know, for the past four years, we're really kind of focused on um, you know kind of uh, just opposing authoritarianism was our baseline. But really, in this next era, we're really trying to create community through common understanding. And the way we're doing that is through content that combats disinformation. We want to make sure we're trying to create an environment where there's a set of commonly agreed upon fact, because that's really the biggest, one of the biggest challenges we face right now is that people are living in, well, there's one side living in objective reality, and then we have the other side talking about Jewish space lasers and yeah. Trump being inaugurated every other week. So mm -hmm. really our focus is disinformation, and we're trying to see how we can bridge bridge some of these gaps in uh the information space mm. well the, the how how <laughs> because that's a big one right you're striking <laughs> yeah. to you, you're striking to the core of the fundamental problem that we have right now the fact that there's two alternate universes happening coexisting in the same place those people who mm -hmm. don't believe masks uh they believe masks are, are are an infringement on their freedoms and they don't believe science you know how how are you and your company actually making inroads into that because that's a difficult task that you've taken on. Yeah. So, I mean, what we're trying to do really now is really shift uh, to a more uh, approach where we can pull people in who have felt as if they, they've been, you know, just disillusioned. Right. So what we do now is we do a lot of extremism focused content. So we'll go to the core of why people become radicalized what rabbit holes they go down and we try to create content we have a partnership with this company called the center for analysis of the radical right um they're actually based in the uk and we publish uh extremism based content around that in which we go to the core of it and say hey look this is the point where people get radicalized this is where they start going on these conspiracy theory rabbit holes and what we want to do in the future is start to interview former like QAnon folks former people who went down these this path because that's what's important you have to show People have been self-radicalized, so we have to get yeah. them to self-de-radicalize and like mm. reverse engineer their how they fell into this, you know. And that's kind of what I mean. It's a big shift from what we were doing, just kind of going hard at Trump the last few years. But now we really want to see how we can be really productive and take on this challenge. We're still working on it, obviously. Yeah. So um, 
I see that you talking about this. Yes, we're having to shift, um, especially in these spaces from talking about Trump and being, you know, going hard on, on speaking about him all the time, every day, whether it was a dumb tweet or yeah. a name that he made up. Um, but uh, <laughs> you, I see that you said that you documented Trump, most of the pre- his presidency, um, his entire pres- yeah. presidency, and you stayed sane. Tell us about that. Mm. Well, you know, I stayed sane. I didn't keep my hair. But as we know, uh, you know, ball black bearded squad is a place to be, as Benjamin knows. You know? <laughs> it's, it's the place to be. You're in good company. Yeah. 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 He's absolutely place to be. right. So yes, sir. Uh-huh. It worked out. It worked out. But, you know, yeah, I mean, documented the presidency. So essentially after the Muslim ban came, it was just a flurry of activity. Me and my you know, co-founder, Zach, and um, you know, Adam, and we, we were kind of there's so much a flurry of activity and we were already doing this new, new news company. I was like 24 at the time. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to, there's so much activity. Let me just start documenting everything that happened. So it turned from one week column into a four year column, which is now like mm. a database that you can click mm. into every week and see literally everything that happened every day and analysis of what happened. And it's, it was a journey. Uh, it was it was wild, um, and I, I don't know how I stayed sane, but I'm just happy to be. I'm happy mm-hmm. I didn't have to do four more years of it. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you have Ram Media, so definitely. <laughs> yeah. So so tell us in terms of like your your strategy uh, going forward with Ram Media, and, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is because a lot of times in these independent media spaces, we're in silos and we are all aiming for some of the similar goals. Um, but without us cross pollinating each other's audiences, we're on our own. And there's just not there, there's the, the resources. I know you've run into this and I'd like for you to talk about it. The lack of resources and funding, particularly for black independent media. Um, what are your what are your strategies around some of those things, as well as some of your goals for your company? Yeah, man, as, as you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard out here to to get uh, you know funding for, for, for black businesses, let alone black mm-hmm. media companies. Um, you know, minority owned media companies, my co, you know, we're most of my co-founders also, you know, half Arab. So, you know, it's, it's tough, but basically we've done a lot of, uh, subscription based. So we used to do, we used to have ads. Um, and then we said, Hey, we don't want to be polluted by that. We want to create content for you and be able to, you know, not have to race to do clickbait. As you'll see, we don't, we, we publish, we take our time on our articles, make sure we got, you know, a solid, uh, meaningful approach and essentially what we focused on is subscriptions and that's really been what is what has driven mm-hmm. us um and that's that's really the key and as you can see like even twitter everybody knows everybody's trying to like Substack. um yeah, everyone's now yeah. trying to inch towards that subscription model because it's the way to build sustaining sustainable revenue that doesn't really get impacted by you know uh the, the market and advertising dollars going up and down Mm. So um, when you we know the struggle uh, yeah. when it comes to you talking about us being in this space by us minorities black mm. media being in this space um, it we don't we get the the short end of the stick so um, when you know when you say subscriptions how how has that been going for you in the in this moment and I only ask because there was a time where it would have probably been going good but in this day and age it's kind of like we no matter how hard we do it, it's kind of like we're we're at the we're at the end of it. We're mm. a lot of um, white media are doing the same things that we're doing, and um, they get it, in two seconds they'll get so much money or or uh, so Flush. much push. But for some reason, it almost feels like like we just I don't know something is missing for us. Do you feel the same? Yeah, I mean sometimes you know you you feel like you're hitting these roadblocks, and then especially when you look at sometimes pre-idea companies, it seems, getting like a billion dollar valuations. And uh, I mean, you know, you got you got Clubhouse built by the black community. Um, I've actually been doing a lot of reporting on that aspect and like talking to uh, some of the, like Portia Bell, some of the people on Clubhouse that are doing activism for the black community there. Um, but it's like, you see these platforms that are run by, you know, non-black people that are a lot of times built by black people getting um, getting funding. But when it comes to media specifically, yeah, I mean, it is difficult where, you know, when it comes to subscriptions, it's been going well. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we bring them into a community it feels, uh, you know, we have a newsletter, um, et cetera. And we've been doing it. We did things for free for so long uh, that I think over time, our, you know, audience and, and people really, they believed in what we did and said eventually, hey, you know, 
we'll, we'll subscribe. And I know it's tough and it's hard to, hard to get into, but you know, it took a long, long, long time for it to get really to get legs. Um, you just had to just had to keep at it nonstop. But um, you know, uh, that's the way to do it. But it's looking like you know, with, with what you you all have here. I mean, what you're doing, you two. I mean, this is great. I'm sure you're gonna have some sponsors rolling in here because I mean, I haven't seen a morning like a real morning show vibe like this on 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 you know really any platform, especially from you know from the black community. Stop it! Yeah. I know we good. We are. We are. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Rebecca. Rebecca, you know I'm gonna roast you real good. It's little. No, it's, uh, let me let me, let me stay for <laughs> all the way live, Rebecca. Uh, I, I I I one of the other reasons I wanted to bring you on is because you also operate in these um, in heavily in the political spaces, but as as an individual person with a voice, right above and beyond what mm -hmm. you do with your media company. I wonder. I, I want to ask you, like, how has your experience been in terms of your politics, your blackness, you're unapologetically mm. black, you're unapologetically progressive. And sometimes those things, those things come to backfire on you if, if you're not careful, because the more outspoken a black person is, particularly black men, the more uh, reticent the, the media community is or just the broader political community is in terms of embracing you as an individual. Have you faced some of those same uh, impediments? Yeah, I mean, especially, uh, you know, earlier, right? Like before it became, you know, more trendy to be this way as we know like once last summer hit everyone's posting black squares and suddenly everyone's a activist but uh mm. like it, it was it was harder in the earlier days right like especially 2014 like we started mm. rant in 2014 um mm -hmm. it has been a long time coming like so i was 21 like my whole 20s spent on this and we were talking about these issues back then it just wouldn't get traction right and then i remember specifically in 2016 i remember adam server posted about this too and I'm sure you all were doing the same thing. But during that time when we were saying, look, although, of course, all Trump supporters aren't aren't racist, but you have to ignore a lot of racism in order to support them. We were saying, hey, the, it's not economic anxiety media. You know, it's mm. not this is not economic anxiety. This is this is white supremacy kind of at the core of this. We've seen these rallies. We're black in these spaces. And then people were laughing it off in 2016. And, and then you see over time, it took, it, it, you know, when you're trying to speak that voice, a lot of the times, you know, you, one of the things that made it good is that just the, uh, the, the, the people on Twitter, especially the, just our audience. And as you, as you've seen, when the people are with you, it's kind of makes the, you know, the, the media kind of pay more attention. I think they've improved a lot since 2016. Um, just because in, in general, when you're being unapologetically black and calling something what it is, saying it's white supremacy or saying this lie is a lie or saying, you know, black lives matter before it was, you know, cool to do so. It's like you said, sometimes people try to, they will, they'll try to marginalize you or say, hey, you know, it's, uh, you know, you get ahead of your skis here as you've probably, you thought both of you have faced something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh no, yeah. You run into On a, it's, it's, it's the phenomenon of where, they want your voice, but they don't really want what you have to say. They want that black voice to say what they want to hear. They don't want that black mm -hmm. voice to say what that black voice wants to actually say. We we've been we've been facing that like not since I was twenty one. Like, how old are you, brother? You you ain't even thirty yet, is it? <laughs> I'm I'm twenty I'm twenty eight. Yeah, man, you out here in these streets hitting it hard at twenty eight. So <laughs> like like yeah. honestly, but but from the very first entry point into this political space. We, Rebecca, I know you can speak to it. We face that same phenomenon. They want our faces, but they don't want our voices. It, it's it's exactly our testimony. Every time we get on here, we and because we um, pride ourselves in bringing on, I mean, guests of color, particularly black guests. Um, we want to make sure mm -hmm. this is a safe space for black people. Um, and when we bring them on, they understand the same thing. It's like we've all experienced that. That yeah. you know. The, and I want I want the white folks money. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I want that money. But when we they, we when we um, accept it and they put us in these spaces, they really just want our look. They mm. want to put us on because it is something that will fall into the box of diversity and inclusion. Mm. Ugh. And then they want to shut you up if you are discussing too much of a certain or particular black subject Respect. that they may person may not personally align with what they believe in. Um, but it's like. This is, has no business to do with you. And I, it would be a disservice to me as a black person in media not to speak on this. Right. Uh, but don't tell them that because they don't like that. They do not like it. And that's when you decide to walk out of that and, and walk away from money. 
Yeah. And do it yourself, which is what, what we have here and which is what you have um, with Rant. So exactly. un- unapologetic spaces are very important because we don't have to water down what the true story is. Right. This is our story. This is our narrative. This is how, this is what it is. And um, yeah. I think, yeah, it's important. I always say this with all the, all the other that come on this show, <laughs> every one of you guys have an important role in this space because right. of you, mm-hmm. the stories are told correctly because of you. Exactly. And especially because uh, they, we're not, um, they think that we're just getting on and cutting on the TV. This is not a, Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. No, this is not that a lot of uh, people okay. have, have the experience to be in yeah. these spaces, whether a journalist or been doing the reporting or a lot of people have that. And mm. that's why I think that, um, they try to make it harder for us because we're not just coming in and just giving opinions. A lot of us have been covering this stuff for years. Yes, this is, this so. is our life. Yes. This this yeah. is is this for you? Is this more of a, is this your life versus a career? Um, because I we run into the other thing is we run into oh, yeah. a lot of people who occupy these spaces as a career versus people like us and you covering this because these stories really represent what's happening in our lives. Could you speak to that? Well, exactly. I mean, I think really it's 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 my life. And that's the thing. It's an obsession. I mean, um, it's really you have to you have to be when you're doing anything, you know, any kind of entrepreneurial initiative, you have to believe in what you're doing and be in love with it. But mm-hmm. like really what moved me into this, I mean, I'm my co-founder, Zach, I've actually been friends with him since we were seven. And we used to talk about this all the time as kids. But like once I got older and then like Trayvon Martin, once yeah. Trayvon Martin um, got killed, I was, he was like two years younger than me. He kind of looked like me at the time. You know, I had a full head of hair at the time too. You know, <laughs> I, that did happen. Uh, he looked like me a little bit. And then I, I was struck. Right. And then that, I got roped in. That was when I really, I was already always, you know, paying attention to news, but then I got really roped in. And then I was in a work, I was in a t- uh, tech, I worked in tech and I was, I worked at a tech company and people were debating the, the, the trial and it was, you know, a lot of the you know people having these these opinions in the media. Was, I saw the way the media criminalized him, and I remember Eric Garner when that was happening, and you know, all of that. That's kind of what started to move me to want to get into media because I realized the power of it and how important yeah. it is shaping these narratives, shaping our story, shaping our truth. Whenever a black man is killed, he gets his mugshot is on the TV. But if it's if the white person is doing the shooting, they show some photo of him and his family, and I saw that, and I was like, this is wrong, um, and. You know, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to get into this uh, and mm. to, to try to be because the lens is the media is a lens through which people perceive reality, as we all know. And mm-hmm. it's been held by people who were just focused on ratings and, you know, mm. they false equivalency games and just not focus on integrity. And it was obviously because of advertising dollars and corporate forces, but it's not impossible to do this and still have your integrity. And that's at least what we're trying to prove. Um, by doing what we do. Mm. Well, thank you so much for that, Ahmed. Let us know where people can find you um, and where your website is so that people can come and stalk you <laughs> and follow you on Twitter. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can you can find me on Rant, Rant Media, um, Rant with two Ts, uh, Media, and um, at Ahmed Baba underscore, you can see on the screen there. Uh, I'll be on there. You can talk to me on Twitter. And uh, we'll, we'll communicate. I appreciate y'all having me on here because the show is a vibe for sure. And, um, you know, just speaking, speaking the black truth is so important. And, you know, as we rise throughout these spaces, let's, let's keep in touch and just uh, do yeah. what we do. That's a fact. Oh, definitely. We'll definitely keep in touch. Make sure you have you back on the show. 